Welcome to our buggy buying guide. We're here today to talk you through the options and the questions that you need to consider when choosing the buggy that's gonna work best for you and your lifestyle and your baby. There are so many buggies, strollers, travel systems out there. So we're gonna take you through step by step. I'm Susie, I'm Editorial Director of Made for Mums. And I'm Gemma and I'm Consumer and Reviews Editor. And at Made for Mums, our job really is to help parents to make really confident choices when it comes to these big parenting products. And we do that by bringing you thousands of independent reviews and also by speaking to parents out there who've been trying these products out in the wild to make sure that you can make the right choice. So Susie, when it comes to these items in which we transport our children. I think the first thing is there's so many different words and so much terminology around it, which can be quite overwhelming when you start. So I think maybe that's a good place to begin. So we're gonna start with this push chair, which we also call a buggy. This is actually the eye candy peach that we're showing today. And as I say, we use those two words, push chair and buggy interchangeably. We'll probably hear us say buggy a few more times because it, it chips off the tongue more easily. But what you've got here is you've got this frame, this nice solid frame, you've got your, your wheels there and you've got your seat for your older baby or toddler. And that is what we would call a classic pushchair or buggy. So that brings us, brings us on to pram, which is the word, the term, term that I, I grew up with, I was pushed around in a pram. And uh, that's something that's suitable from birth usually, and it looks a little bit like this. Indeed, I'm gonna take this off now, the seat, and I'm gonna add this, which puts it into pram mode. There we go. And what this does, so we've got here now, this beautiful flat base here. So we've got this carry cot, and the carry cot ensures, because it's so important, babies under six months really need, when they're sleeping and when they're even lying there, to be on a flat, totally flat base. It's basically a bed on wheels. I love that, yeah. And, and you've also got your nice sort of high sides. Many carry cots have quite firm sides and it protects the baby, your baby from the elements. And we know, you know, how bad the weather can be, especially mm -hmm. something to think about if you're having a baby who's gonna be, you know, those six, doing those six months during the really colder seasons. Absolutely, I had a January baby, so I needed the coziest thing possible for him. And, and you know, you've got a hood here. It's just a, a really great way to kind of push a baby. But you can, get um, some push chairs that actually lie flat so they don't have a, this separate kind of made carry cot and again you just have to be a little bit careful when you're doing your research because there are certain buggies that will lie completely flat and then you might buy a cozy toes and and Can then cocoon your baby, cocoon your baby and, and a hood and it will look like a carry cot um, but there are others where actually they're not completely flat. That is allowed, the manufacturers are totally entitled to call it lie flat, but it's not totally, it's got a slight tilt to it. So we would advise go for that complete lie flat and, and then you've got somewhere safe. But if you've got your carry cot, then we would call this pram mode. And then I think the next one that we get asked so much about is travel system. So a lot of people might think, well, this is a travel system. It's something that you can travel around with, with your baby. And our definition is that it's basically a push chair to which a car seat can be attached. So you would take the car seat out of your car and clip it in. Mm, absolutely. If you want so to take the carry cot off. And um, yeah, and, and so your baby, you've been carrying your baby around in a car and you know that if you're going to pick your baby up out of that out of that car seat and they're going to wail and be very unhappy and wake right up and what a travel system does is just enable you to actually take your your baby keep them in the car seat and actually take them straight on to using this frame of your buggy so you, um, susie's just added adapters here depending on the brand of your buggy you may need to put adapters um we're doing this because this car seat is by Cybex rather than by iCandy, so those adapters allow you to put the car seat on there. Absolutely, you don't need, you know, as you say, it doesn't need to be the same brand car seat, but not all car seats are going to fit all buggies. And not all adapters work for all car seats. 
So you do need to do your research. You can come to Maine for Mums, you'll find lots of the compatibility there in our reviews, but also on the manufacturer's websites as well. And you don't want to be stuck with the wrong car seat, especially if you're going to be using your car seat a lot. So let's explain why a car seat is just a short term place for your baby to be when using your buggy as, as a travel system. It's down to something called the two hour rule. And this is a guideline that recommends that babies should not be in an upright car seat for more than two hours at a time. And this is because they have very immature sort of neck muscles. Yeah, so we know we have to support the head. Absolutely, and so it's really good that they lie flat. But also because anyone who's had a baby when you're driving a car, they tend to nod off. It's a really great place for them to fall asleep. And they're more often than not, even with little newborn huggers, which you can get for car seats, more often than not, their heads they will slump start forward to slump forward. Bit, yeah. And it just means that there isn't quite as much oxygen circulating around. And therefore, from a safety point of view, after two hours or around that two hour mark, even if you're driving and you're on a long journey for like four hours or five hours, you should stop the car, take your baby out. It's going to wake them up. They're going to wail and, and use those lungs. And that's great because the oxygen goes back in and then you can pop them in. And so when you come to travel systems, it really is a great way of transferring your baby and not waking them up. But it's not a long term solution. So that rule would apply if you were walking around with this as well. So yeah, Harry Cot offers you the opportunity to keep the baby in the push chair for longer if you need. Definitely, and, and, and that lie flat position. And one thing to add is that we're now seeing an increasing number of lie flat car seats, mm -hmm. some of which will lie flat when attached to the buggy. In that scenario, as long as it's you know flat, then that means it gives you much more flexibility and you can have your baby in there for longer. So it's a, it's a bit of a choice. Okay, so there's one word we've not touched on yet, which is stroller. And I know biggest confusion with this is that we use the term differently in the UK to how they do in the US. So if you're Googling anything, it might confuse you. But in the UK, dad is a pusher and this is a stroller. And in general, a stroller tends to be more lightweight. It's a kind of runabout. And often as well, it's something that's suitable for a slightly older baby. So over six months when they can be sat up a little bit more. So the one I've got here is the Cybex Label. As you can see, in terms of lightweight, I can pick that up with one hand. It's a little nippy one, but obviously there are huge differences. The wheels, for example, if you take a look there, are completely different. This is not going to do well on a, a bumpy terrain. Yeah, it's not designed for that, is it? It's designed for sort of um, being versatile cities, towns and quick journeys. That's not the sort of I'm going to go out for a day off roading. Absolutely not. It's more of a kind of nippy item that you might want if, for example, you're doing a run to nursery or the school run. Um, or if you are traveling, because it's got an amazing fold, which I will show you in a second. And I think the other thing that we know is how many parents actually buy more than one buggy. Absolutely. That, that you start with your classic buggy that's going to, you know, cover a range of, you know, really going to last, really rugged. And then you get to a point where perhaps you might want something you know, lighter that you can nip to places with. Absolutely. Not everyone does, but we do find there are a lot of and people. And I know that was the case with me that I started out with something like this and I now have a lightweight too. And we kind of alternate depending on what the circumstances are. So come on then, let's see the let's fold. Let's see this fold. So <laughs> if you are traveling, this is amazing because this will actually fit in the overhead compartment. This one's quite exciting because it doesn't only fold down, it also folds in. And I think that that um, overhead locker is very interesting. You've seen more more strollers like that come onto the market, and you've even got some strollers that will fit that, that are very small and compact, but actually are suitable for birth because they lie flat when they have a cocoon or a little carry cot. Yes, yeah, or they or they have yeah they have a bassinet, or they can be used as a travel system as well. Yes, indeed, you can put a car seat on. So there is a lot of choice, but you know with every every sort of choice you're making an option you're making there are going to be things that it's going to be best for and then other areas where it's not going to be so good for and certainly in terms of this ruggedness you know what we would call a kind of standard or classic push chair it's got a slightly heavier frame and, a, and bigger wheels it's definitely the more versatile option yeah 
Okay, so we've seen the options available for single push shares, but I know a lot of people are probably interested in what options they have if they're looking to push around more than one child. Yes, and there are two types. So you have the traditional double buggy, which is designed and built for pushing around two children at any one time. And then you also have convertibles or singles to double, which you can uh, have either in the single mode or as a double buggy. So let's start with this one. This is a traditional double buggy side by side. This one is from Roma, it's the Gemini. And you'll find with side by sides that some models you can use from birth. Mm -hmm. You may uh, need to buy an additional carry cot or two carry cots if you're having twins. Some will also come with, uh, you'll be able to attach a car seat to turn it okay. into a travel system as well. I think the key thing is, if you're having twins, then do make sure that it's compatible with twins. Most and you're a twin mum yourself, so this is Susie's area of <laughs> absolute expertise. And and others will other side by sides will be suitable from six months when your baby can sit up in a in a seat. One of the things, just a cute little thing to look out for, is around the independence of each of these seats. Now, you may want to have a, a buggy where the seats will recline separately. So here you've got one in full recline and the other one is upright. And even as a mum of twins, pushing around two boys of the same age, one was much sleepier than the other. Yeah. So, you know, very useful to have that independence. Mm. So what are the advantages of a side-by-side? Of a -side? Why choose one? Well, I would say that the interesting thing is you've got two children here and their weight is spread out here and it can make it much easier to push a lot of uh, side by side. You can easily push with one hand even as they get bigger. Um, you can also find it's easier when you're pushing down to go up and down curbs. It's just because that weight distribution is there. However, mm. they're obviously wider. They're wider than single buggies. Yeah. And um, I have some twin friends who bought beautiful double buggies, side by sides. And then when they got home, they literally found they couldn't get through the front door and oh, had to no. take the wheels <laughs> off each time. So, you know, always check measurements. Um, and but, but you find, you know, double buggy manufacturers make them in a way to be as compact as they can. Yeah. And it can mean that there's a little bit of compromise on the width of each seat so they may not be quite as wide as you would get from a normal single buggy okay. but but you know saying that I had twin to you know, see a lot of toddlers in side by side so you know just think about from your perspective and the size of your child and the age of your child and and I guess the other thing is you know they are for two children they are big yeah. and if they fold down with the seat on You've got quite a chunky folded buggy there that's going to be quite heavy to pick up. But hey, you've got a double buggy, so it, it is, you know, there is that risk of it all being just bigger. Yeah, obviously it has to be. If you're going to put two children in it, by nature it's going to be larger in some way. So that moves us on to the other option. So this is actually the eye candy peach that we've been looking at before. You've seen it in single mode. Now here it is in, in one of a number. <laughs> of double modes or tandem or um, single to double, lots of names used for this type of buggy. So what we've got here is our carry cot on the bottom for um, baby up to six months and then a seat on the top. There are, for all these different, um, the different models of this, there will be different configurations that you can put these seats in. So lots and lots of yeah, configurations. Yeah, and that's one of, the, one of the, the great things is it gives you a huge amount of flexibility. But what I would say is every parent is going to have different needs in terms of where they want their children to sit depending on the age depending on temperament so do take a look at the um the different options that are available with different models and try and work out which one will be good for you i also think it's great to go and have a go at pushing one in those modes uh, one of the things that you will find with these because of the way that the weight is distributed is that that um you know you need to have a test of how it is to push over a curb how it is to, to move around they do tend to, to be uh, you know these ones are longer where those ones are wider that's yeah and it's things. definitely a different feel and you may need a bit more oomph to kind of get it up especially as your child gets older um and and you know there's just more weight that you're pushing there absolutely and you know that does mean that even when you're using it in single mode you'll probably find that the chassis itself is, is a is a slightly heavier chunkier chassis but you know some people love that i actually really love a push chair that feels like it's got some weight in it i don't know what it is maybe it feels sturdier to me but i quite like that so i find these uh, are quite great for me um and the great thing is that that they are the, the width of a single buggy so yeah. my friends who had to take the wheels off there's nothing like that they are 
just able to go through absolutely so doorways. yeah corridors doorways all those things if they work in single mode they should work in double mode for that as well and some some single to doubles you have to buy an extension pack or an extra seat or yeah it is pack. worth remembering you know depending on on the uh-huh. model so this one for example we talked earlier about the fact that you convert the carry pot into a seat so if you then wanted to move it to double you may find that you need to get yourself some adapters or buy an additional seat so that is a cost that you're going to incur but equally it's likely to be cheaper than buying an entirely new pushchair so do just do the maths on that and work out which one's going to be the right solution for your and, family and some single to doubles actually come ready that they they actually have a, a carry cot and a seat yeah and all ready to convert into a double if you need so again it's a matter of research it is and it can be quite confusing when you're looking at like what's in in the box but do take a look and kind of work out what you're what you're going to get in the initial pack and anything that you may need to buy additionally um yes yeah, so that is the um the single to double and um i've got an, an, a sort of slightly different one over here this is actually another single to double it's just a single to double that converts outwards rather than in so this is the bugaboo donkey um and the handlebars actually extend outwards to get into this double mode when you've got it in single there's just a little um shopping basket on the side of it um but that is another option that's available to parents who perhaps prefer the push, the feel of having the weight distributed in that way. Um, and as you can see, we've got, got it with a carry pot and a, uh, and a seat in this one. And again, different ways of arranging them depending on the model and the style. So it really comes down to personal choice. Yeah. I think the key thing is when you're thinking about buying a double, check that it's gonna suit your needs. Check the configurations if it's a single to double. Check if it's um, if you are having twins that it's the right kind of double. It will work for you and take two carry cots, for example. And then I think you just need to decide. You know, what, if you are buying a single and planning for the future, well, have a think about what does that mean. You know, are you someone who wants to have something that could adapt mm. if Mother Nature plays the game? But if you are doing that, just make sure you love it in single mode too. Uh, and test it out in double, but just just ensure that it's going to work for you from day one rather than planning too far in advance and, and, and finding that you end up having to do something else entirely. And you do find that as toddlers get older, some of them like to walk and also then use a buggy board rather there will come a time when they're not very keen to get back <laughs> in a buggy. Yeah. So again, that's another consideration, you know, is your toddler at an age where you can get them onto a onto a buggy board? Yeah, and also worth pointing out, probably some of the some of the single to doubles can also take a buggy board. So if you've got three children, you might have a solution there too. So just those those little details are always worth checking as you're kind of planning for the future. Okay, so we've seen all the different types of single and double buggy that you could possibly imagine. Um, but I think depend, regardless of which one you're, you, you think is going to work for your family, there are certain considerations that you need to have when you're choosing the exact model. Yeah, you want a pushchair that's going to work with your lifestyle and how you're going to use it. So do you live in a built up city? Do you live in a town with parks? Do you live out in the country and going to be taking the buggy out on rugged terrain? And this is what you've, re- you know, this really affects kind of the frame, but particularly the, the wheels. And, and the key rule is the bigger the wheels, the better it will be over rougher ground. The small wheels are fantastic for versatility and you can sort of manoeuvre it in and out. But what you find is that a lot of these standard classic pushchairs will have the bigger wheels at the back, which mean that they can really cope over rough ground, but also then slightly smaller wheels at the front that are solid and they will be able to, you know, you can steer and it really means they'll cover most terrains. Yeah, so there are all terrain ones which have bigger wheels that will tackle that, but for most people, the sort of halfway house of having a, a, a classic standard tends to work. Yeah, it, you know, it, it absolutely. You just go for those. If you're going all terrain, then have a look at something that's really going to serve you well. But these these will really suit so many people. So I think the next consideration is what you do with this when the child's not in it. So whether you're putting it in the car, whether you're just looking to store it in the house, we get asked a lot about how to fold them up and how easy it is to fold. And it's definitely a consideration, but I would say once you've learned the knack, then you generally know how to fold mm. your your buggy. And there are two different types of folds. You can have um, a two-piece fold or you have a one-piece fold where everything folds in together. This example is a two-piece fold. So I take off the seat like this. 
and then I can just fold it down like this and pack it like that. There and then go. it's actually standing there. One of the things you know to, to look at is whether you want it to be freestanding. It can mean that it, it then is quite compact when you're if you're storing it at home. Yeah, especially upright. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that it's it's also interesting in two parts versus everything folding together. Because when you are putting it into a car, as you were saying, and a lot of us do, or lifting it up, perhaps lifting it upstairs, then actually if you've got a two-part fold, it's going to feel a lot lighter because you're splitting the weight. Absolutely. And I noticed that there's a strap on this one. This is something that I didn't realize. I thought that strap was for carrying it around with you. That's not really what that strap is for. The strap is I there. I think it can do both. And I think, I think in terms of, you know, if I was taking this upstairs, um, or, or but yes you're absolutely right it brings it closer so then trying to put that in the boot of your car is so much easier than having to step down crouch down and really pull and pull yourself up so you know a strap you again you'll find that on some and it can be really really helpful but you also have when you have a two-part fold you've actually got two things to store yeah. and in a car that in a car boot that might be good <laughs> Um, because you've got flexibility of where those bits go. But generally, if it folds all in one piece, that generally can be a, a slightly smaller fold. So again, think about, you know, on Made For Moms, we have all the folded dimensions. Check with your boot that you can yes. get get your buggy and because you're not only just going to have your buggy in there as well, generally, you have all the other paraphernalia that goes with your baby. So I think another big consideration is about you and your partner you know every, we come in all different shapes and sizes Cece you and I I'm, I'm quite a lot taller than you um, and we often disagree on which ones we like and dislike because there's so much of a personal feeling in getting that push chair and giving it a push I can tell straight away I need to pull that handlebar up quite a lot for this to feel comfortable for me so I think that's one of the reasons why it's important if you can to go out and have a go and push particularly if you and your partner are very different heights. It's important to find something that both of you are comfortable with. Yeah, because it really makes a difference. You can feel that when you push it, depending on the height of the handle, it really affects, and also your own personal centre of gravity, it really affects how easy it is to push. So don't, you know, do experiment with the height of the handle as well, because you may find, whoa, that's such a much better position. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reasons why when people ask us, you know, what's the best push chair on the market? There is no answer to that because it really does depend so much on you and yep. what you want and what you feel. And that kind of brings us on to the basket. My favourite thing. <laughs> I'm a bit of a shopper and as I said, I don't have a car. So um, I really love a big shopping basket. Um, and something worth pointing out, we've got the carry cot on at the moment. This one's actually pretty good, but sometimes with the carry cot, it can block access to the basket slightly. So that's worth looking at in those first few months. Once you've got the seat unit on, never tends to be a problem. And we know that a big basket is just fantastic because you won't believe how big you will, how much stuff you have with you. Well, I, yeah, I say about shopping, but quite often before I leave the house, the basket's already full because you've got your changing bag, you've got all your baby paraphernalia, you've got your handbag in there. And it's interesting that one of the things to check is actually how much weight that shopping basket will take. Yes. Because it may be a little bit deceptive that it's a massive basket, but actually it's got a smaller weight capacity. So again, just something to have a think about. Final question is, it's about the carry car. Again, you know, we've talked about the options, the travel system, the fact that some of these are lie, uh, lie flat straight away. But people do ask us all the time, do I really need the carry because if you've got a lie flat, if you're buying a push chair that is totally lie flat, that's an absolute legitimate question. Mm. And, and also sometimes the carry cot is extra. So I think there are pros and cons, as ever, it's a personal choice. But you know, we do recommend the lie flat, so you want to make sure that's there. Yeah. What you get, you know, carry cots are adding to the cost. They can also add in terms of storage because if you've got a separate carry cot and a separate seat, at any one time you're going to be storing one, and they are, you know, not insubstantial. And with a carry cot, you are only using that for around six months. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is with the peach, with the eye candy lime, with the bugaboo fox, they actually have a frame that you transform the carry cot into a seat, so you don't have that storage extra. 
and yeah. you're not going to be going between one and the other. No, you? you're not. No, and yeah. you wouldn't because it's not. It's it's you know it's something you have to kind of sit down and, and build. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't flick a switch and do it. But no, at that stage you've made that decision. And then I think the other thing that's quite interesting with carry cots is that some of them are certified for overnight sleeping, occasional overnight sleeping. So you potentially have a a, a really nice place for particularly daytime naps yeah. that you know if you it, it doubles up as your or even a kind of newborn travel cot when you go and visit the grandparents i know some of them you can even buy a stand to put them on as well so they really do become kind of like a moses basket alternative so i think you know there are there are pros and cons but just remember that absolutely lie flat so the final thing we should talk about does always come down to the money doesn't it and i think Again, this is a question we get asked, how much should I spend? And it really does come down to personal budget and what you have to allocate towards this. I do think it's one of the biggest purchases you'll make when you've got a child. So if you're able to, do put some good funds behind it. But, you know, this is a market where you can get a, a lightweight stroller for anything as little as £25 up to, you know, one to two thousand pounds for a designer pushchair, probably way beyond that. We don't look at the like luxury luxury. But... Um, the great thing is that I think that there are options across a number of different budgets. And we even have, on the Made for Mums Awards, we've got awards for different price ranges, really to suit your budget because you there, there's so much out there and you, you know, it goes back to really to, to summarise that it's about what you need. And as Gemma was saying, there isn't, there really isn't one perfect buggy there is the right buggy that's going to suit you and your baby and your your family's needs and so do your research and and think about exactly how you're going to use it and what you want and if you can try it in person but you are going to find a fantastic there are so many out there you are going to find a fantastic one and we just hope you really enjoy pushing your baby there's nothing quite like it is right. there